Aim to change, but ladies and gentlemen, right now we are joined by Lauren of the Not Okay. How are you? Oh my gosh, I'm great. Good to join you guys. How are you? And happy birthday for you today. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was a it was a fun, unusual stream. Uh, thank you so much. My my co-host today, by the way, is Joseph Joseph Barb, aka J, JB Music. Uh, Lauren. For those that may not know know you, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug or promote anything you'd like. Oh shit! Well, that's um a pretty pretty open opportunity there. Um, so hi, I'm Lauren. I'm from New Zealand, as you can probably tell from the super Gumby accent already. Um, <laughs> I'm the singer in um the band that um, I'm assuming you're seeing on screen, the Not Okay's. Um. So my uh, husband and I, who is the one on the far right, um, have been uh, doing this covers band um, at Emo Nights where I sort of DJed for years. Um, and just one day I uh, got, well, this is a very under-exaggerated um, condensed part of the story. Essentially, I got diagnosed with ADHD last year. And now that I'm finally medicated, just that really self-critical voice in my head has pissed off. And um, we've changed it from uh, that sort of covers band to starting to release our own stuff. So it's, yeah, it's super exciting. We're obviously a little bit emo. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a lot of fun. Just five good mates. Hell yeah. Cool shit. <laughs> I was diagnosed with ADHD at four years old. I am a spit fireball cracker of energy at all times. So I totally understand. How how nervous were you writing the first original, going from covers only to an original? And can you talk about the process of how you wrote the first song? Yeah, honestly, like terrified. Um, and I used to do a lot of theater as a kid and you'd sort of play roles and you'd have sort of the script and you'd have the story and someone else had written it. So it wasn't necessarily you. So I was really nervous when it came time to do um, originals. So the first original that we've released um, and the only original that we currently have on streaming is called Better Days. So um, Aaron, who is just on the left of me in this picture here, um, he's essentially our producer. He's the the Jordan Fish of Bring Me the Horizon. That's who he is of us. <laughs> Very cool. So, um, yeah, he's he's our, our musical genius, um, and his he's the one who wrote this one. Um, and so, Better Days felt like the right song for us to come out with first, so people could get to know our sound and what we're about. And ultimately, everyone's had better days. Everyone's had those really low moments. And the story that inspired um, this for Aaron was just a, a period of loss after loss for him. So. Yeah, I think I think everyone can sort of relate to that really low moment, but it's about trying to pull ourselves out of it and talk about it because ultimately nothing gets better unless you talk about this shit, you know? It's true. Uh, before we play Better Days, uh, what is your Facebook link? Chat's wondering if they can go, they want to go follow and like your page real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, well, please, let me do that. So we're just the Not Okays um, on Facebook, I'm pretty sure, and same on um, Instagram. I think it's... Cool. Should be. Super easy. Well, while we confirm, we're going to jam Better Days right now. And uh, if you guys are feeling it, please throw them a sub, a follow on Spotify, whatever you can do. That'd be awesome. Now, to me, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Paramore, which I think is a, it's definitely a compliment. It has like that kind of vibe to it to me. Um, how did you meet everybody else in the band? Oh my gosh. So um, it's actually a crazy story with, with all of us. We all have sort of these um, really intertwined links. So um, obviously B and I are husband and wife and we met each other at the bar where I now DJ. He was DJing and I fell in love with his um, tragic emo taste in music and eventually came back and fell in love with him. So there's that. Um, with Caitlin, who is the bassist in our band, uh, we actually went to high school together. So um, we've been loving music and did Dragon Ball Z marathons on the weekends. And so we've just been friends for years. Um, so B and I aren't the only couple in this band too. So Aaron and Caitlin are boyfriend, girlfriend. 
Uh, so we, um, the four of us actually, Aaron, Caitlin, Bahadur and I lived together um, in the COVID lockdowns and, you know, it, it clearly went well. We came out the other side and wanted to join a band together and create heaps of really cool shit. So, you know, didn't, didn't want to kill each other. So that's great. Um, and then Noz and Aaron used to go to high school together. So it's, um, yeah, it's a really tight knit sort of unconventional family. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. JB, yeah. uh, what questions do you have for Lauren? Right on. You being a vocalist, do you hop on any instruments during any of your songs? Not yet. Not yet. Yes. Um, I play a little bit of piano, but vocals is definitely my main instrument. Um, multitasking isn't uh, my greatest asset. Perhaps it's the ADHD kicking in. Um, but no, we definitely have plans for me to sort of get on get on the tools eventually. But um, just focusing on not not mess them up. <laughs> 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 I think it's super cool that behind you, you have like a 1994 rec cube TV right there that I haven't seen since I was a yay high, yay high tyke. Is that just for like aesthetic of the room? That's for aesthetic. I'm actually in my husband's man cave at the moment, um, as shown by the dig old bit sign. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, <okay. laughs> But um, no, we, we, B and I are huge Rick and Morty fans. We've named um, one of our cats after the really obscure uh, Rick and Morty character, Shrimpy Pibbles from Interdimensional Cable 2, the galaxy leader that uh, Jerry has to give his penis to. Um, yeah, so we're, we're just massive nerds, B and I. So that is funny. He, uh, he told me how much he spent on that. And. <laughs> <laughs> So I do want to do some trivia with you while we play a little bit more of Better Days, but um, uh, you get to pick the trivia. Now, it seems like you know a lot about Rick and Morty, so I could go there. But otherwise, my suggestion would be any TV uh, TV show or movie that you've seen more than anything. Okay, right? it's going to need to be Rick and Morty. And if my, if, seriously, B would probably divorce me if I didn't choose that. Okay. And it's going to be embarrassing if I get anything wrong. So you're in for a show either way. <laughs> Excellent. I'm excited. Excellent. You are in for it right now. Let's see. Let's see if we can oh, stop her. Here we go. If I get it wrong, I have to have some. That's the deal, right? You brought the hot sauce? I did. I'm a champion. Okay. Well done. I'll drink out of a shoe if you need me to. I saw you what? doing that the other day. What? what? Yo, we're just gonna what? do that. We're just gonna do that for fun, just because. That just sounds like a good time. Yeah, why not? It's just a rite of passage here in New Zealand. <laughs> Put on the showy. In Rick and Morty, and I believe it is season three, I'm just confirming it is, in Rick and Morty season three, episode is called The ABCs of Beth, which I'm sure you've seen every episode. Beth mentions, as a child, she used to play in a fantasy land that she assumes was imaginary, but which Rick tells her, this is a real place. What is the name of the place? Freaky land, mate. That is correct. Yeah, hell yeah. Well done. You did not have to do the hot sauce. Freaky land is correct. I thought it was a hard one. So pick pick a number one through thirteen, and I'm gonna do some hot sauce. But we also we owe you a bluff. So this is your bluff. <laughs> It's just something we do around here. Blahs. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> I will keep it close to my heart forever. Uh, and I get lucky number 13. Why not? The number 13? 1, Absolutely. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is Hawaiian Lava Flow. Ooh. Looks like this right here. So the other two tracks on the page are, are covers, correct? Correct, yeah. So, um, Bite Me is Avril Lavigne. So pretty quickly after she came out with that, um, we were like, man, this this is epic. And it's so cool that she's working so closely with Travis, who, oh my God, Blink-182 is back together. What the heck? It's, um, yeah, what? the second that we saw that come out, we're like, man, we need to cover this. Um, and then Sophie is a cover of a, a, basically it's a New Zealand classic um, from the band called Good Shirt. Uh, so we released that during New Zealand Music Month this year, and it's it's close to my heart. I bloody love Sophie. It's a good time. Let's check it out. 
How was your sauce? It's, it's stinging. It's stinging, <laughs> but you know what'll help? Is if I wash it down with a chewy slash thongy. When can we when can we expect the next original single? Great question. Um, so we are currently working on our first EP in the background. So currently we have um, five original tracks that aren't here. Um, so yeah, I, I'm thinking it's likely either going to be end of the year, start of 2023. But um, if you're one of the lucky Aucklanders who's coming along to the villainy show at the power station tonight, you're gonna hear them. Oh yeah! <laughs> okay. Okay. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's, do um, you... a lot of fun. Do you have any do you have any odd hobbies that we would find uh, fascinating? I mean like um ADHD, so I have a new one every bloody week that I'm <laughs> hyperfixing on something new. So. <laughs> um honestly I've this sounds so fucking lame, but I've been really getting into my gardening lately. Like I've just all of a sudden it's not it's not the fun gardening either, because marijuana is illegal here in New Zealand. Um Mm. Uh, but, um, no, I, every I, day. <laughs> I do. So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, listen, uh, gardening. Fucking love gardening at the moment. I'm such a boomer, apparently. <laughs> Fair enough. Do, is it like is also some vegetables and fruits and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, we grow chilies. Um, oh, I, cool. I grow a good jalapeno, a good serrano, a good Tabasco as well. But um, starting to warm up here in New Zealand. Uh, it's almost chili season and I'm frothing. Hell yeah. JB, uh, yeah. go ahead and, and rattle off one more if you have it. I'm going to try and find one more trivia to Stumper. Yeah, yeah. try me. Try I'm me. <laughs> so your, your voice is amazing. Are you vocally trained or is this naturally uh, your talent since you were at a young age? Oh, thank you so much. Um, no, so I, I did a lot of musical theater growing up. Um, so I've been, you know, choir and singing lessons. So yeah, I, I guess I'm trained. Um, this is my first time releasing, you know, original content with the team. So it's been, it's actually been really difficult to find what my voice is rather than, you know, if you're singing a, a Paramore song or a My Kim song, you kind of use their tone, but finding my own voice has been a bit of a journey and I feel like I'm still kind of finding it too, but it's, yeah, it's it's cool, it's fun. Um, and do you know what? It's nice being the vocalist and not having to lug all of this bloody equipment everywhere. But then again, <laughs> I'm married to the drummer, so I'm fucked either way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you put it together, you you guys set up. I'll just be over here, just uh, warming up. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> Also, in Rick and Morty Season 3, Episode 6 is called Rest and Rick Laxation. Uh-huh. Rick and Morty go to an alien health spa and undergo a treatment that removes all of their psychological toxins. With his newfound confidence, Morty takes up what profession? Ah! Uh, he's a stockbroker. Mother that is correct! Yeah, hell yeah. Damn it! We are not able to stump you today. Well done. Ironically, it landed on another hot sauce anyway. I think. So pick shoot off another another uh just random number one through one through thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm lucky. This is Dead or Alive South Texas Lime Jalapeno, but it's a green hot sauce. So you know it's not yeah. gonna be not be too brutal. More more taste on the tasty end. Mmm. Very Lauren, good. I mean. Lauren, what scares you? Do you have any phobias? Needles. Fucking hate them. Which is crazy. Like I have tattoos and piercings, but um no, like when it came time for the, the COVID shots, I had to have so much anti anxiety meds and I still cried my bloody eyes out. Mm, yeah, I just hate them. And so, then bees. Bees as well. They're like flying needles. They have an advantage. Don't <laughs> nah, I'm good. I'm good. What I about almost you guys? Put the hot you guys have out. <laughs> they, so like so like if the if you have to like go give blood Fuck you're no. 
you're screwed. You're no, not... I just listen. I um, give other things to the world, and blood's not ever going to be one of them. Thanks. Fair enough. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, we have a, a time for a couple more questions. JB, go ahead and rattle off one, one more, and I'll do uh, a pretty serious one as the last one. So we talked about you know new original content coming. Do you have any covers planned on releasing? Mm, see, that's that's a good question because um, I think when when it comes to like bands who have released or have even come out sort of and being known for for covers first, like thinking the likes of like our last night, um, it, it's you sort of have to toe this line of when do you use your time and your resources and your energy to releasing something that's original and when do you do that for a cover? So I think we're quite keen to start steering away from covers. So I, I know that the next thing that we're going to be releasing is going to be that um, body of original work. But in saying that tonight, we are doing a mean cover of Britney Spears Toxic at the power station. And so Excellent. it's going to be so good. Excellent. Excellent. Hell yeah. So, uh, speaking of that, you, this is not my final question, but I know that tonight you, uh, you said something about this is the biggest show ever for you. Can you just, oh, yeah. why is it so big? Because it's just, it's big. It's huge. It's the biggest venue we played. Um, so it's, it's at the, the power station um, in, in Auckland, which is where we live in New Zealand. Uh, so we are um, opening for a band called Villainy who are multi-award winning um, rock band here and really good mates. Man, we've we've had some messy nights in this house together. <laughs> um, and then uh, Dead Favors as well as playing. So they're also um, incredibly talented. They won the New Zealand uh, Music Award for Rock last year. Um, and I'm, I work in PR and publicity full time. So I was very fortunate to work on the Music Awards last year and got to celebrate when my friends won. So... That's yeah, awesome. it's, it's going to be really exciting to play with um, some real heavyweights of rock on the biggest stage we've ever played, on the biggest, you know, to the biggest audience. Um, I've seen the likes of uh, Falling in Reverse play there. I've seen Alexis on Fire play there. Like, it's just, it's just dream come true shit, honestly. That's awesome. Congratulations. Hell yeah. Thank you. That is I amazing. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a final question for you. It's a fairly serious one. It's kind of a, a one or the other uh, you can kind of pick. Uh, regarding the music industry, what is probably the best advice anyone in the industry has ever given you or a terrible mistake that you've made or you've seen a buddy's band make that you don't want a band that's just starting up to make? Yeah. Do you know what? I think I'm going to go the first one. Um, and I think it's it's quite specific to New Zealand as well like we we're quite a small country I think there's around five million of us um in total so we have this um phenomenon called tall poppy syndrome I don't know if you've you've heard of that before but um essentially it, it can be quite common to tear people down who are trying to put themselves out there and do something creative or you know, if, if, if it looks like they're chasing fame or whatever, people will really tear them down. And so for me, I guess the, the best piece of advice is that there's haters everywhere. And if you if you focus on what what people are saying, like my, my um, husband's in a, another band that's <laughs> much more successful than the Not Okays. They're called Written by Wolves. They're in the millions of streams on, um, on Spotify and YouTube and everything. And... Um, when we first started dating, he was saying, like, you know, it, it's great that we're getting these dislikes when the dislikes still show, because if someone has the energy to give you that much negativity, they care, ultimately. So, fuck the haters. <laughs> it's really... I love the that. Thing. Focus on what makes you happy and focus on what fills your cup. Very well said. Hell yeah. Well, Lauren, have a fantastic show. Make sure you kill it. Blow the roof off that mother <laughs> Sell a bunch of t-shirts, merch, whatever you guys have. But uh, this is fantastic. I appreciate you so much. If this is okay with you, I'm going to put this on YouTube later tonight. I'll send you the footage uh, and everything. Have an excellent show. Lauren of the Not Okays! Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> Thank you so Thanks much. So much Cheers.